Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and this is another episode in a home Proxmox server series. In this video, I'll show you how you can run Caden Live video editing software inside Docker container, which will run inside LXC container, which will be hosted inside your Proxmox home server. So let's begin. The reason why I'm doing this, I'm actually already using this kind of setup for about a month or so. Um, long story short, but I moved to use the Dell XPS laptop running Pop OS as my work computer and sometimes I'm using that laptop to edit my videos for YouTube and for, for you guys to watch and I started to use the Caden Live program to edit my videos. It's open source, it's available on Linux and Windows, I believe it's available on Mac as well and it all works great and all works well when I need to edit the video on my laptop but I don't want to keep my laptop running at 100% CPU for half an hour 45 minutes while Caden Live renders that video. So instead of doing all the video rendering using Caden Live on my laptop I decided to create the LXC container inside my Proxmox server which runs Caden Live software and then does this final final mile stretch run which just renders the video for 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour. I don't really care how long it's going to take. I'm just loading the file inside this LXC container, inside this Caden Live program, press render, and I know that it's going to just chug along and the video will be cooked. Video will be ready in like an hour or so. So let me show you how I'm doing this or how you can set up the same thing like I've been using for about a month or so. First thing what we need to do is to set up ourselves an LXC container inside our Proxmox server. So let's start by just pressing a create ct container or create container create ct and i'm just gonna name this k done life oh by the way before you do that you need to make sure that you have a template of the same one that i'm gonna use i'm gonna use ubuntu 22.04 if you don't have that template yet you need to select whatever storage you keep your containers and iso files inside select ct templates then click on a template run a search by just typing ubuntu or just ubu and here we go i'm gonna use 22.04 that's the one I'm going to use. So if you don't have that one yet downloaded, you just download that and it's going to appear in your list. So let's create a container. The name I'll give it is going to be Kden Live YT. The password, I'm just going to set up a very simple password. And the last thing what we need to do on this page is just untick this. We need this container to be privileged because we will mount Samba share later once everything is set up because I don't want this container store gigabytes and gigabytes of video footage, audio footage, etc. I, I have all this stored already on my NAS. So I need this LXC container to have access to that Samba share. And to do that, I need to make sure that the LXC container runs with the privileged rules instead of unprivileged rules. That's why I unticked a privileged container and everything is done on this page under templates. I um, will make sure that storage is selected correctly and click Ubuntu. Under disks, I will make storage, make sure the storage is collect, selected as a local. And eight gigabytes is not enough to run Caden Live. You need minimum 24, 25 gigabytes. So just to be safe, I'll do 32. CPU, minimum, I suggest to go with two. With memory, minimum one gigabyte is fine, definitely not 512 megabytes. One gig of RAM is fine, but if you want to run really like well-ish, uh, two gigs of RAM is fine. If your server allows or you have enough resources, increase that to four gigs or even more. And swap, I'll make sure that this is set to one gigabyte. So this is, I would say, a minimal requirements for this to function properly. Under network, I'm going to click DHCP. Under DNS, we're going to leave everything here. We're going to leave all this to use host settings instead of uh, specifying exactly what DNS server we want to run. And that's it. I will not start this container once created. So I'm going to click finish. So right now Proxmox is creating this container for me and container is created already. I'll wait for container name to show up. So here we go. So right now I'm selecting this container and I'm making sure that the right container is selected here at the top. I will click on options and select features and click edit. And we need to turn two features on. One is called nesting and another one is called SMB C SIFs. Nesting means that it will allow to run container inside a container which basically I will be able to run Docker containers inside LXC container. And SMB is where it will allow me to mount Samba shares. If I will, if I selected this container to be unprivileged, I will not be able to select Samba at all. So that's why we need a container to be privileged. So once that is done, I'm going to click OK. And the container is created. Uh, this is changed. And just double check resources to one and two. I'm going to click on the console and press start. Container is running, but in, instead of using this smaller-ish window to do all the things, I'm just going to double click on the container name 
it will open a second page or second tab for me. I will double click to go in the full screen, press enter to bring the terminal and just write root and a password is the one I set up during the container creation process. So I'm logged in as a root. First thing what I want to do is update the packages and upgrade them. So I'm going to do apt update and apt or oh, come on even type upgrade. Here we go. So apt update and apt upgrade. I'm going to press enter and wait for this to finish. Next thing I need to install three things and remove one from this LXC container. So let's start by installing these three things and they are docker, docker compose and zip utils. So to install them apt apt install docker docker dash compose and sifs dash y and that means i want to install docker docker compose and sifs and a dash y means auto accept permissions and i think sifs needs to be like this so instead of sifs i need to type sifs dash utils and press enter and right now the uh, LXC container will go and do the rest for me automatically. So I'll wait for this to finish now. So Docker, Docker Compose and Sift Utils installed. And like I said, there is one thing I need to remove, which is called App Armor. So APT remove App Armor. And App Armor is like a security guard for the LXC container, which will check if everything runs correctly and everything is runs properly. Because I'm have I'm running LXC container privileged LXC container, App Armor will complain about the Docker container. And because it's going to complain about Docker container, Docker container will not be able to run. That means I won't be able to have KDN Live running inside this LXC container. But I can have KDN Live because I need Samba, I need Samba, etc. So I need to do something about this. And there is a way to make App Armor behave or be friends um, with the Docker, but all, like I haven't tried all of them. But quite, I tried quite a few uh, workarounds, but I just could not make them to work. Maybe because it's a Lexi container privileged and etc. etc. So the most easiest and probably most unsafe way to go is just remove App Armor completely, which is not recommended to do. But for my case, this is my home lab, my home server. There is no access from internet to this Lexi container, and no one in my household even knows how everything will work or set up. So I'm quite feeling safe by just removing App Armor completely and just making sure that the Docker will run properly without App Armor. So we have App Armor removed and SIF utils and everything else is basically installed. Next thing we need to add the user and not because we need that user to be, we're not going to use that user to use, to, to write commands. But we need that user because we need ID number 1000 and ID and a group ID 1000 exist inside this LXC container. So to add the user, just type add user and then space Mr. P. In my case, Mr. P, you can put whatever name you want. You can put John, Billy, Jeff, doesn't matter. So as you can see, it says adding user, Mr. P, user group created 1000, user ID number created 1000. So it says new password. I'm just going to put something simple for the password. Then it's going to ask me for full name, room number, work number, phone number, etc., etc. You can fill this in if you want. I'm just going to leave all of them blank. I'm going to say, yeah, all information is correct. Next thing I need to add this user to pseudo group. So in this case, right now, if I'm going to put ID Mr. P, as you can see, it belongs in three places. So it is user, group, and a groups. I need to make sure that this user belongs into pseudo group. So that means I need to type sudo um, user mod space dash cap a uh, lowercase a space or you can put like this or you can put like this it doesn't matter. So it means amend groups. Sudo is a group that we want to assign to, and we want to assign Mr. P to that group. Like in your case, it can be Jeff, like I said, or Billy, or whatever name you created. Press enter, and now if I'm gonna do ID Mr. P, as you can see at the end, it says it belongs to the sudo group. If I'll type su, su space Mr. P, it will inform this user that you are actually just became um, this, the user, you can run sudo commands. So that's great. So right now, if I put cd space tilde, it will automatically jump uh, into my home directory. And in here, I need to start creating a files that kdenlime needs to run. First thing, we need to create a folder called config. So we're going to do like this. And next, we're going to do nano docker space compose.yml and this is where we're going to space paste paste all the instructions of uh, docker compose to run kden live and we're going to use linux server.io docker container for kden live if i'm scroll down on this github page i will find the docker compose instructions so i'm just going to make sure that they're all copied so select them all okay click actually this icon here go back and i decide the terminal which is this one 
right click and choose paste as plain text and this is all the instructions that Kden well docker needs to start the Kden live container so we're going to use 2.1 version of the docker compose we're going to run service by name Kden live this is the image we're going to use which is going to be latest version docker container name will be Kden live which is fine by me next it says security op uh, options and it says optional so i'm just going to delete them because i don't really need as you can see th this this is the one where it says pd 1000 pg and uh, pgid 1000 this is why we needed the user and now i'm going to just change my time zone into europe london as i'm from uk subfolder we don't need that keyboard we don't need that path this is where we're going to put the volume path we're going to put dot and then delete all this up to here that means that the current folder and the subfolder inside, which is going to be config, that's why we created config folder. Devices, this container will allow you to map the devices to this container. That means if you have, a, let's say, a hardware, let's say a GPU, you can pass through a GPU to this container. The Kingdom Live will use that GPU to render videos. But in my case, I don't have a GPU in my in my Proxmox server. It's all CPU and RAM. So I'm just going to take this off or comment that out. Otherwise, Docker, comp Docker container will complain about it. So the size one gig here is again, it's optional. I'm going to leave it like this. I think this is more like a, a hashtagging size. Uh, one gig is fine by, the, by me and restart. It says unless stop. So control O to save, enter to confirm, control X to close. And as you can see, this is where I put dot config. This is why I created this folder because it means Docker compose file is located here. Current folder plus one inside will be config. So right now, if everything is fine, I can start this container. To start a container while I'm still in the user, I need to type sudo docker-compose up-d. So I'm running sudo command, docker compose, please run this, co this container and it will go and check this file and we'll make sure it's running and detach or dash D means detach. It means don't put anything inside the terminal. All the logs and all the setup process lines and everything will be hidden and uh, basically behind the scene. Press enter, give her my user, user password, not the root password, but user password. And right now Docker will go and fetch everything what it needs. So it goes and pulls all the image from Linux server.io repository. Uh, the image name is Kden Live, and we want the latest version. And it's right now go, it will go and download all that. So just give a second for this to finish. Actually, while it's running, we can go inside not the settings, sorry, inside this, and we can click on summary. And you will see that my setup is right now using 1.3 gigs out of 32, and this will go up and up. I should go past 15 or so gigabytes. So just let's wait for the container set up to finish and I'll be back when all this is done. So I have my Docker running of Kden Lives to double check. I can put sudo docker ps and it will tell me that container, this container ID, container name, Kden Live, image is that. It's just a bit of weird formatting, command, etc. etc. So it says state is seven seconds. If the container for some reason crashes or not starting properly, you will you will see restarting here, message restarting here showing up every a second or two. But if you, if the if the number let's say 27 seconds definitely started, but if a number crosses like 10 seconds or a bit more, that means everything is fine. Just to double check if it's all good, I can write a command over the sudo docker logs and give a container name, or you can give a container ID. So in this case, for example, if I'm gonna do docker sudo docker ps ID number zero two, I don't need to put all that. I can just put first two. Uh, numbers or even first number, first two numbers, if there is a multiple containers that starts with the same initials, let's like say same numbers, let's say 02A and 02B, you need to make sure that you put something that is unique. So in my case is going to be sudo docker logs 02A. And here we go, I get the output file. The If I run this command again, if the log hasn't changed since the last run, it means it's froze, or what, the way I'm calling it, it's frozen, it means nothing's changing, that means it's running and there is no errors waiting pending to be basically displayed on the screen so right now it's running so i'm going to go quickly run ip dash ip space a 65 is my ip address of this i'll go straight to the browser and delete all that and put 65 at the end comma 3000 enter so kden live is running here we go, Kden Live is started, and this is a Kden Live video editing software, the same one that you will find if you will download that on Linux or inside the Windows. So if I'm gonna go full screen, let's say if I click on this and I click on that, this looks exactly like I would get if I would been running that 
inside my inside my Linux. I even can show you that. So I'm gonna go and run Kden Live, the actual Linux version. Let me bring that up on the, here on the screen. So this is a bit re-edited because you can re reorganize it with the windows and stuff in here. So this is actual software and this is inside the browser. So right now I have Kden Live running. Everything's fine. Container is behaving. Everything is great. I need to go and get the actual look storage set up because I don't want to store all the files in this container. So I need to mount the Samba share. To do that, I need to write sudo nano space slash etc slash fstab and you need to put a location of a samba uh, where, samba location obviously i can use one of the true nas uh true nas um, data sets that i have uh, created but instead for this video i'm going to use i'm going to mount my actual youtube folder that i've been using for quite a some time to get everything going so this is a going to be a location of my youtube youtube i'm just double check if i done everything correctly so this is where it's going to go oh this is the samba share next i need to enter the location where i want this to be mounted so in this case it's going to be this config is located is being mapped from the host which is actually container into a docker that's why we're doing the volume setup i need to put the nas or whatever folder name i, I can put here inside the config folder then we instruct i'm going to use sifs uh, file format it's going to be user we're going to use user username will be galaxy password will be galaxy then it's going to be io char set tar set equals utf8 next one is going to be no perm and then it's going to be zero zero so this is the sample location this is where i want to mount the file types the that we're going to use user and this is user credentials and what kind of uh, hashtag and whatever this thing is called for for all the numbers and letters UTFS, yeah, UTF-8, I entered correctly. No permanent zero, zero. Control O to save, enter to write, Control X to close. And now I need to navigate to the config folder and make sure I have a directory here called NAS. So if everything's done correctly, if I put sudo mount dash A, no errors. That means that the mounting happened. If I'm gonna go inside the NAS, here we go, this is the folders and everything that I've been using for my YouTube series of the Proxmox. As you can see, there is a folder called demo. So let's close that and go inside the Caden Live. Right click and choose add the clip. And if I go to home, click on a NAS. And for some reason, I don't see here anything showing up. This is weird. I need to probably restart the Docker container. So give me a second. To restart Docker container is quite easy. You just need to go inside the location where is a there is a docker compose file file so i'm going to put docker dash compose restart because i didn't put sudo here we go now it's restarting and once that is restarted we're going to check if it's working after mounting and restarting the docker container it should work so let's go inside home nas and this is all the folders that are inside my nas located inside the true virtualized true nas so if i click on a demo this is the, the tail scale setup, the video that I posted quite about a week or so ago. So this is all the assets, all the videos and everything I use for this video. So what I can do, I'm just gonna control A everything and click OK. So right now I'm bringing these videos into this virtualized Caden Live editor. As you can see, there's a part portion of this video. Let's find the biggest file here, which is gonna be our biggest video, video file instead of audio. Let's see, here we go, this is the video one. So I'm gonna drag that in and that's it. And I can actually edit here and see what's happening. If, and audio will play, obviously I can't demonstrate this because I'm screen recording and et cetera, la da da. You just, I can't do this. But right now, let's say if I go here, I'm gonna say, I wanna make this a bit smaller. Let's drag a bit this one. Let's find somewhere like here. It's about finished, five minutes mark. Control, uh, Shift R to cut, delete that portion. So that's where it is, that's it. Okay, um, let's say you you forgot to delete a part of this video. Let's say I wanna delete this video. I'm doing all these quick edits inside the LXC container. So I'm deleting, bringing that, bringing that up. Let's say I wanna delete this chunk here somewhere. Delete that, right click, remove all spaces on all tracks. Let's say I done my quick retouch before I'm, let's say I'm on a bus or somewhere on a train, I can actually, go to this container from my fold in a display 
and using a stylus I can do this fine tuning touches from Samsung DeX or from my phone in the internal display and once I'm ready I can render them and to render them I can click on a project and there is a red button here that says render I click on that I'm gonna choose that I want to render it MP, MP, MP4 click on this file and I can say okay I don't want to render inside the videos I want to go back and I want to go inside config NAS and demo as you can see it says untitled which one I tried it before I'm gonna say yeah fine let's say let's put the one to three in the front actually no let's do ABC in the front and click save and right now I'll click render and right now this LXC container is rendering that video for me it's gonna render in three minutes the five minute video or so if I go back inside the Proxmox and select the container click on a summary as you can see CPU is speaking at two like a 95% all two CPU speaking and I'm using all the RAM and that's fine I'm not I'm not expecting this kind of setup render videos fast this is kind of setup for me when I'm somewhere out and about and realize that I forgot to render video or maybe uh, I need to render video but I need to do final touches I maybe forgot to cut the portion of the video where I'm just not talking at all or I need I forgot to put the overlay or, or b-roll or something or something or something etc etc so this is where it helps for me because it just runs at right now it doesn't matter if it's picking up but I too I, I'm almost 100% but this is not the CPU of my laptop being tanked this is actually server CPU so let's see how we're doing with the rendering it's about a minute and 30 seconds left so I'm just gonna wait for this to finish and when all the rendering is done I'll be back and here we go my render is finished is actually rendered in 2 minutes and 37 seconds and the length of the video was I think is about five minutes or so so let's quickly check how long this video was so it's basically here so what is it five minutes 28 seconds in about two and a half minutes which is like I said it's not the fastest out there it's not using a GPU but it's just fine it's one of these things that I just I know I can render or do a quick touch-ups on a video it doesn't matter where I am in the world or even anywhere or even not on my device that's what I was trying to say because I can link this IP address to my Cloudflare tunnel setup which I demonstrated how you can set up I'll leave a link to that Cloudflare tunnel setup video in the description below or and if I remember the card should pop up up there if I remember to add that card but anyway if I'll put this let's say next to or something like render.mrpcloud.com I can go to any library, any computer, any device with a browser, enter that, get the text message or get the email with the pin, authentication pin number, and I can edit this even in a, a slowest library computer as long as internet connection is decent. Anyway, the video render is finished. So, so this is actual storage. I just mounted for my on my Pop OS uh, in laptop. And this is the file I created. So if I'm going to go and do like this, as you can see, it's created 1947, which is two minutes ago. And that's it. This is how I'm using my server to render my videos for me from anywhere in the world. As long as my server is running, as long as I have internet connection, I can log into my server and render the videos inside Caden Live video editing software running in LXC container. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.